Bass Beast Bros Fishing, and today I will be talking about where, when, and how to fish soft plastics. So, for bass, I will be going over a little bit of the basics, colors, and rigs, and rod and reel setups. So, I'm going to start with colors. So, you know, choosing colors for soft plastics, or even any color for bass, can be difficult. There's too many choices. And um, you'll you'll end up getting some wacky off the wall color lure which you'll never never use and may never catch a thing you know, and you're shopping and before you know it you're knee deep in pink senkos so uh, so we'll try to eliminate that problem and uh, it could be a, quite an expensive you know task, but as you become more confident in throwing you know standard colors, you could start experimenting with different colors and you definitely catch bass on any color bait but one will be twice as effective as, as that color so i'm going to start off with sunny when it's sunny so when it's sunny watermelon colored soft plastics are really good in clear water when it's light outside the light penetrates the clearer water and it better stands out it stands out better basically the stained water and it penetrates the water better the light in, in clear water better than muddy water so your bait will blend together well in that environment and weather conditions if you're using a green pumpkin or a lighter colored soft plastic so if you can't get any bites with like a green pumpkin colored soft plastic try throwing in some like flakes because that's when they reflect the best through the water is when there's some light out and when the water's clear and uh but when it's cloudy in low light conditions cloudy in low light conditions in clear water too as well a green or brown or green pumpkin colored soft plastic will produce well so just think of like like fishing green pumpkin in clear water on a sunny day just go a little bit darker than that just make it a little brown and uh so it's, it's just the same thing as sunny day you just darken the color uh, to a certain extent but a uh, green pumpkin works great in cloudy clear water situations it adds more depth per se you know and allows bass to find the bait better but if if throughout the day you get like patches of like sun try throwing in some you know just some flakes to your your uh, soft plastics so it'll definitely up your odds you know okay so let's move on to dirty water so if bass fishing in let's just say dirty water you just use dark green or brown or maybe even darker yellowish color uh, i would consider that dirty water um but in dirty water, dark lures are important so you can cast an, a shadow and it's easier for the bass to see. Because if you're fishing dirty water with a green pumpkin uh, or bait with flakes in it, the light would not penetrate the water enough to activate the flash of those little flakes. So that's why using dark purple or black plastics is a good idea. Uh, and using red, black, or blue glitter if the sun is out but still a little murky water. So let's move on to clouds and dirty water. This can be a difficult time, especially on soft plastics. Bass can't see long distances in this situation, so use black and dark colored soft plastics. Um, you could even use a scent or a rattle in your plastic to up your odds. So let's just say it's like a really, really dark day with really muddy water. Uh, just use the darkest lure you could find with just any little thing you could put on it or inside of it to make it more attractive, basically. So I'm going to move on to rigging techniques. There's many ways you can rig a soft plastics to match the depth, size, or even the type of cover of the, or the size of fish targeted, how deep you want to fish that lure. And uh, there's always new rigs that, that are constantly being thrown out there in styles, but I'll name a few of the best tried and true soft plastic rigging techniques. So I use five main techniques, five or six usually, but these are my five main techniques. I'll start with the Texas rig. I'd say it's the most popular uh, rig in all bass fishing. You know, it's, it's and it's made to be thrown uh, a weedless and around cover, just like grass or mats or anything like that. And uh, you could add a weight in front of it so it sinks down better and uh and like like let's just say a big weed or grass flat and you and it just keeps getting hung up and weeds and stuff so this is texas rig right here and um if you want to go deeper just put a bullet weight like this in front of it and it will just go a little bit deeper like that two the carolina rig 
like the Texas rig, but the weight is detached from the lure up the line and above a swivel. Three, drop shot. It's my personal favorite, and especially in pressured and clear water. So the weight is at the bottom and the hooks are attached above, meaning a more natural and uh, sensitive type presentation. You know, and you could get more, uh, more, um, more a shake or action out of it. Let's just per se, per se you know what I mean. Uh, and the wacky rig, the wacky rig has a great falling and twitching action that works very, very well in clear, shallow water. It can be worked in deep water, but that's my favorite area to fish it. But it's a presentation that allows you to skip it under cover, like docks, and uh, just to get the bass's attention. Number five. The Nico rig, it's similar to the wacky rig, but it has a nail weight in the end of it, so it gives it a unique new presentation. Okay, I'm on the types of soft plastic, so I'm going to be straightforward here and say there's many types of soft plastic. A lot of it can be a preference thing, but, but maybe uh, different in many times, you know, the day or year or or even, I mean, it could change on the hour. I mean, what bass are feeding on it, it just depends. But uh, just just say, you know, there's there's many different times and seasons. So let's just say you're you're fishing a soft plastic during the shad spawn. You'd want to use like a, a fluke shad or like a swim bait, uh, and you'd want to use white or silver or any like shiny plastic type color that works really really well. And um, when the crawfish are active in spring. Yeah, you throw something that looks like a crawfish or even like a creature or beaver bait works really well. So, um, or even during, uh, spawn, post-spawn when bass are spawning and they're protecting their nests, their beds, and use, uh, any predatory soft plastic like a craw, tube, fluke, even like a swim bait. There are many different types of uh, plastics work for the spawn. It's a great time to use soft plastics. So, um, the sink, I'll name a few soft plastics that are, are best for bass fishing in general. So, the Senko, Ned Rig, Fluke, Craw, Swim Bait, Creature, Worm, or even Tubes. Many work great but just remember to key in and break it down into what the bass are feeding on so right here i already showed you this is a texas rig right here and what you want to do is you want to take it like that so i'm just taking off this is how you rig a texas rig so in the other side there's this little spot where you can rest the end of the hook in and that will be so uh when the bass strikes it it will have you know a little area to come out when it strikes it in, in like thick cover or something. So this is what you want to use in like thick weeds or cover. So what you want to do is you want to put it right in the very top. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just in the top like that a little bit. You want to go down. You want to go just over like that. Just push like that. Okay. And go down like that. And just twist it like that. See what, I mean? you see what I'm doing? I go down. Uh, turn around, go down, turn around. Just think about that. <laughs> and you see right here, look at the end of right here. Put your thumbnail right there and where that is. Put the uh, side of this, uh, hook into the soft plastic right there. So that is a perfectly rigged Texas rig right there. And that's like the most versatile soft plastic or lure you could use in all bass fishing, I'd say. Here, I have a craw. You could rig this. I have many things you could flip. I use it on a flipping uh, rig, punching rig. Those are all a bunch of different rigs I'm not going to get into, but you could Texas rig this as well. You could rig it many, many different ways. And it's just a great presentation here. And um, uh, you could put on jigs as well. That's my favorite thing to put on a jig. And that's most people's favorite thing to put on a jig. Here is a beaver bait. And it's 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 like a craw, but it's, it's like, let's just say, you're fishing weight winner and you want a slower presentation but something that still looks like a craw then this will work good because the colder the water the the, um, the less action you want on any type of bait especially a soft plastic like let's say you're you're using this as like a trailer on like a 
spinnerbait or a jig or or anything just use uh, just something like this when it's colder because this works perfectly like that and it, it imitates like bass I mean no blue no blue when well, you can imitate bass but but mostly bluegill or craws or any uh, thing type like that you know right here I got curly tails my favorite way is to Texas rig these you also can drop shot these these are very very standard and kind of like one of the first soft plastics you know and uh summer these work very very well right here i have a fluke this is what i mean during the shad spawn and you see the light uh makes it invisible like kind of like see-through that's what i was talking about when they say the light penetrates these baits the best and uh this could be this is used like during spawn or shad spawn because it will look like a fish trying to feed on bass eggs and a bass will see that and they'll get aggressive and they'll defend their nest and come after something like this even like this this is tube these work really great in summer and these imitate bluegills gobies craws anything like that very versatile bait here is i already showed you this but this is the senko again this is the black and blue one uh and and some white on it but this is basically the most versatile, best fish catching machine in all of bass fishing. So, right here, this is just like a straight tail worm right here. This is very good for uh, drop shotting because it's just a little bit smaller than most. This right here is for Ned Rig. I love these. And um, you could just uh, hop these off the bottom. These work really, really good. These didn't come out too long ago, but these are fairly newer to uh fishing world but these when it's like all fails type of lure it'll just catch anything anytime mostly um hopefully but uh you know use that black and blue um, when the water's muddy uh, or you know not clear you could fish this really really slowly especially in winter or when the water's cold so that's a really good lure these are some i have some of these rigged up on like jig heads and stuff this is a regular worm. This is rigged up on just a jig head right here. And you could jig it off the bottom and it falls. And the tail has lots of action like that. And through grass and stuff. But that's why you, if you want to fish it through grass, it works better if you have the Texas rigged with um, a bullet weight right here. So you can fish it through the weeds without it getting snagged up like that. That's why I put it on a jig head. But this you can use for like walleye and stuff like that if you want it open face like that. This is the Ned Rig, just like that. That has the mushroom type jig head, so it sits flat, perfectly flat on the bottom like that. Uh, if I can show you, like, flat on the bottom like that, it goes like that. It works really well. Oh, miss. This is a, a drop shot hook. And what will be like this, it will be like, I don't know, I'd say a 8 to 10 inch fluorocarbon leader going down like this. To this right here and you'll just go like that you'll hop it it'll go and this will be it just gives it so much action it's a perfect it's just a perfect soft plastic surf perfect lure and right here this is uh, a, a wacky rig senko and this works great when the bass are bedding because it looks like a bluegill or anything and it just has great falling action when it falls it goes kind of like that kind of exactly like that actually and you could jig it up like that and it just had really, really cool action to it. And I, and, I, and I just love it. So. Okay. Let's finally talk about rod and reel selection. So use a graphite rod. I personally use any um, spinning or bait casting rod in the 6'6 six, six to 7'2 foot range. Anywhere from medium light to a medium rod. So you have the best sensitivity possible. Best sensitivity possible for the size and type of uh, plastic that you're fishing is is my what the goal would be obviously and uh i love my 69 medium abu garcia vendetta rod uh, and it, it's a very good rod for any type of soft plastic oh. <laughs> i had the camera fall a little bit there that's okay we'll just set it back up here a little bit <laughs> and um but it's all a preference thing it's it's mostly and, and it's just what you like, what's most sensitive, and uh, and uh, the rod, uh, your type of lure I, I like is, is a fast, uh, just a strong 
just as well a decent strong rod but it has to have lots of bend and sensitivity to it and that's what makes a good soft plastic rod so a five to one gear ratio uh is really good but you don't need an extremely fast a reel for the soft plastics or anything like that maybe uh um, swim baits you need a fast uh, reel for if you're using a swim bait but uh just pair all this information uh together and uh and you're sure to catch some monster bass so hey if you enjoyed today's video do not forget to like and subscribe thanks and have a great day on the water